we're going to hook up with our good friends from Walleyes for Tomorrow. Hey, I'm going to tell you something. If there ever was an organization that really does a tremendous job when it comes to our fisheries, especially our walleye fisheries, it is definitely Walleyes for Tomorrow. These guys are some of the hardest working, most knowledgeable people when it comes to our fisheries that I have ever met. Let's check out and see what they got going. All yours, bud. All right. Uh, this is my third year. Third year? Uh, probably done it four or five years, something like that. Six. Six years, huh? Well, right now, what we're doing is we're coming into where we work the fish up, and we've got a tank on the boat that will fill up with water with a pump that we have here on shore. And then uh, once we get our tank full of water, we'll go check our first net, which is right here on the point. Female. Here. Male. Right female. That female. Male. Male. Hard female. Right female. Male. Male. Right female. Right female. Right female. Right female. Right female. Hi everybody, I'm Ken Vandenplus from Walleyes for Tomorrow Shano Chapter. Today we're working our uh, uh, walleye spawning hat or hatchery. Um, what we're doing now is we're taking fish that have been caught in the nets. Okay, so what we're doing is we're separating the fish by male and female. We're in the tanks. We have two tanks with a end tank is a ripe females. This is ripe females here too. And the two middle tanks are all males um, that we'll use for spawning. The males will do two, to one, two males to each female. And that is done up on the bowls here. We'll show you that in a minute on how we fertilize the eggs. They're looking for half a percent. Half a percent to one percent will survive the adulthood. So, out of six million eggs, that's you know that's a significant amount of walleyes put in a six thousand acre lake.
big one out of here because that could be somebody's Walmart one day. I think so. Okay. Female, 26. Wipe the bowl out, grab me a towel. Give me a wipe here, Charlie. Okay, ready? This is our max size that we'll use, 26 inches. It's still a younger fish. It'll have a good fertilization rate uh, compared to the 29 to 30 inch. Okay, and needs more water in there. Beautiful, okay, all yours guys. Okay, what we did there is we wiped the uh, moisture off the fish's stomach. Try to keep it from uh, getting eggs wet because once they become wet, they become active and there's a limited time that we have once the egg is active to have it fertilized. So what we're doing is just rubbing its stomach. Get the eggs to come out. We don't need a lot, this is not a lot out of this one. Um, until she quits giving egg. We don't have to press real hard because we don't want to hurt her, uh, her reproduction organs. Now we'll mix water with the uh, milt from the males. Mix that with the, yeah. Mix that with the eggs. Got her. Hand it on down the line and those guys mix them for two minutes. And once they're done, we will take the, uh, clean the water off that we use with, uh, with the uh, milt. And then uh, we'll put them in the uh, holding trays with a bentonite clay so that they don't stick together. Uh, we can show that in a little bit, bit, a little bit here. Female, 22 and a half, ripe. Okay, the next step is we're going to take the eggs out of the hardening trays and we're going to clean the, uh, we're going to clean the uh, clay off them and then we're going to measure them, document how many eggs were in each tray because each tray is typically one female and we'll be able to measure how many ounces of eggs that female gave us uh, and the eggs are 4,000 per fluid ounce. So right here, here's how we rinse the clay off. Just put them in a strainer. The strainer is small enough that the eggs won't go through. Try to get as many of them as we can. See in here there's some small clumps, that's what we're trying to eliminate. All these eggs, once they become fertilized, become instantly sticky so that they stick on the grass and rocks out in nature. We can't have that because in the jars, we need to have them roll and keep individuals so that they get fresh oxygen. If we had a clump of eggs, the ones in the middle would all die off and would contaminate the rest of the jar. You see here the screen that I'm putting on, that'll stop any eggs that are floating, that are lighter from floating onto the top of the jar. So they'll sit in here for anywhere from seven to seven days uh, to three weeks, depending on the water temperatures. Um, the warmer the water, the faster the eggs will, uh, will hatch. One half of 1% would be a phenomenal I know we don't get that. Uh, five, five million that we release, that would be 25,000 fish every year. Now you see how everything is numbered on this, Hunter? Yeah. Everything is numbered so we can track the eggs. We know what 
eggs came from what tray and we put into what jar. And at the end, we can actually start doing some mortality statistics by looking and saying, okay, we had all smaller fish in this tray or in this tube compared to the bigger fish in this tube. And we can figure out which, what size is uh, giving us the best production. The smaller fish are like most, most things in nature. The younger fish are just like the younger animals. Uh, they're, they're more fertile. We have a better fertilization rate than we do with really super large fish. Uh, we try not to use any fish any bigger than 26 inches in the hatchery. That seems to be about the cutoff for us for having good effort fertilization rates. So we will be running for about the next two weeks here until the uh, eggs start hatching. Once the eggs start hatching, they'll come out of the hatchery and go into this tent here into our holding tanks where we'll hold them for two days until the, uh, their yolk sacs start to uh, be used up and then we will put them in coolers and give them a boat ride out to the middle of the lake. If you like what you see what we're doing with Walleyes for Tomorrow, we are a 100% volunteer organization. No one collects a check from Walleyes for Tomorrow for payroll. Uh, the only checks we write out are to pay expenses and to pay contractors to do some of our marsh projects or other large projects. If you want to sponsor Walleyes for Tomorrow, you can go to walleyesfortomorrow.com or, I'm sorry, .org, or you can go to Walleyes for Tomorrow, Shano Chapter Facebook page, and follow our, uh, our progress on how we're doing this year. We try to do daily posts, but we are 100% volunteer, and we all have full-time jobs, so we do miss a few days. Hey, I'll tell you, was I right or not? These guys from Walleyes for Tomorrow are incredible on what they do, so knowledgeable. And you know what? The next time you catch a walleye and you're looking at it, you might want to kind of think about the guys over at Walleyes for Tomorrow and maybe join their organization. And you can do it down below, walleyesfortomorrow.org. Hey, everybody, want to give special thanks again this week to all of our law enforcement agents for keeping our homes and our cities safe. No doubt that they do an extraordinary great job. And thanks again for everything that you guys and gals do. We also want to thank all of our brave men and women that serve in the armed forces for the unbelievable job that they do to keep in this country safe. And remember, like I always say, we are still living in the greatest country in the world as of today. And no doubt, and I mean no doubt, it is a great day to be alive. Hey, we'll see you next week. And you can do it down below, walleysfortomorrow.org.com. <laughs> hey, and you can join down below at walleysfortomorrow.com. <laughs> Walleysfortomorroworg.com. <laughs> no org? Dot org, man. Dot org? Yeah, right. Hey, and you can join down below walleysfortomorrow.org. Why can't I say it? .org. Walleysfortomorroworg.com. Oh my God. Dot org. Dot org. Dot org. org. Walleysfortomorroworg.com. Why doesn't it go? And what am I saying? Right, what am I struggling for today? Right.